Hello and welcome in. Finally, we have got sound. We've got life, and uh, you're what we're. I mean, we've we've been trying to fix this for about 20 minutes now. We have quietly missed a pretty good ball game, as the Uni College Bulldogs have come to play on Senior Night. Yeah, and you've got to wonder if there were some conversations in the Union locker room about maybe Brian looking past this game for their uh, winner-take-all showdown with Reinhardt coming up soon. Yep. But uh, Union Union may have something to say about yeah, that. Yeah, they're uh, so far 39-27 advantage. Brian College 650 left in the second quarter. I'm not, I'm not sure if Union can keep this pace up. As you see the three-pointer there, bang. <laughs> the three-pointer, uh, that was number two, Madison Cox, made it look pretty easy. Yeah. 39-30. I know Brian is playing... You know, they're seniors tonight. As you see the foul there by number 32, Mackenzie Himes. Uh, but, you know, Meg, uh, number 21, Megan Easterday, has canned two threes already. Yep. And Katie Farrell's got two fouls over there on the bench. Yeah. Um, well, you, you see, I, of course, we don't know how much you can, you've can. you heard of us this last 15 yeah, minutes yeah. or so. But Union is platooning two really effective posts yep. there. And uh, sophomore Madison Brady, who just checked in, for the senior Mackenzie Himes, and they're having their way in the paint so yeah, far. They absolutely are. Brian has just about nothing uh, to offer to, in, in lieu of stopping those girls. Yep. Um, that last shot, Samantha Russell, air ball, I believe it was off the hands of number 12, Janiah Moran. But you're right, this Union College coach has kind of figured out we can't keep one of these girls on the floor right. for too long. So every two minutes, one of them just runs out there yep. and gets fouled or gets, you know, it's a bucket, yeah. and you touched on it a little earlier. I don't know if anybody heard this, but number 33, Madison Brady, already has 12 points in the ball game. Megan Easterday, 4-3, it rolls in. How about 3-4? <laughs> Megan Easterday, nine points on senior night. Don't know if you could ride it any better. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, <laughs> Brian's needed every, every yeah. bucket so yeah. far from her. I mean, without her nine, this is a three-point ball game. Move over, Tori and Sam. Megan Easterday is here to play. And Russell swings it one more to Davis. Davis, the rim out. Rebound Brady. Union College is barreling up the floor. And, I mean, you know, this season probably not gone the way that they would have wanted or thought. But you see a three-pointer there for number one, Rachel Smith. Yep. But they have honestly just just come in with a nothing-to-lose attitude. And the men's team saw this a little bit last week at KCU. KCU far yeah. out of uh, contention for the conference tournament, but played probably their best game all year, and that's what these Lady Lions are getting right now. Well, and so far, I mean, you just got some nice young pieces. And Megan Easterday sick of getting pushed around she by the bigger body Brady. She earned that one, yeah. yeah. she did. Yeah, and, and, and Brady's made her presence known early here. I mean, you've got the sophomore Brady, you've got the freshman guard there, and Rachel Smith you talked about a little earlier. I mean, Union's looking to, to cap this season on a high note and pick up some momentum. Absolutely, and of course, that tiebreaker versus Reinhardt doesn't matter if you drop a That's game. And right. uh, Reinhardt, uh, we're not sure if you heard in the pregame broadcast we touched on it, um, Reinhardt's head coach, Tony Campbell, serious car accident last night. Our thoughts and prayers go out yeah. to all with the Reinhardt University family. Um, and the game will be played at Tennessee Wesleyan. Okay. Um, at, that'll be the neutral site. Of course, Tennessee Wesleyan, only about 30, 35 minutes up the road for Brian. So if you haven't come to a game and you're, you know, you're thinking, you know, maybe I should make it out to the one, that would be the game to do it. We watched them last week. It was a heck of a game. Yep. And that's uh, next Monday, I believe. And Megan Easterday, top of the three. The top of the key. Excuse me. Four to three. Has head coach Gabe Johnson been hiding a, a sharpshooter on his bench all year? She's got 12 points. Another arrow in the quiver for this uh, team of shots. And there's another one. Samantha Russell, Union coach, has seen enough. <laughs> man. Oh, and man. a team like Union that, that's making their bones in the paint. You, you've got to. Yeah. We wondered coming in, could they keep up with this pace? 
And when shots are falling like that in, in rapid yeah. succession, the answer is probably going to be no. <laughs> Brian College, I mean, not their best game. They've almost got 50 with 433 <laughs> to go in the second. I wouldn't say they're even playing well. No, it, and, you know, they didn't start their normal uh, starting five. They came out with an all-senior lineup. Yeah. But uh, you, you wouldn't notice any ill effects with um, – with Megan Easterday's uh, <laughs> four threes, this has been wild things happen when you get uh, get seniors on their down to their last game. I'm I'm sure it's not, the night is not done delivering surprises. Well, and I don't want to take credit or anything, but this is our maybe fifth or sixth, fifth and sixth game together this yeah. year, going back to volleyball and. I don't think we've uh, broadcast a, uh, a Brian loss yet. Nope, so we haven't. Uh, we have not. Act- well, we the men's CIU by one. That's that's been it. Uh, but besides that, we're perfect. And right now, Union seems to be playing a little bit, trying to play with Brian. That it's not their game. Yeah. You can't you can't do that. Like they they come down, they jack a quick three. That Brian can do that. This Union College team. The yeah. numbers suggest they can't. Yeah. Well, and, and you just you've got to be you've got to be patient if you're union. They started off with a game plan, getting it down low, rotating those posts in and out, um, getting into some foul trouble. Um, but but the talent in Brian's just uh, yeah kind of rising to the top it's right showing now. Showing through for sure. And speaking of talent, Tory Brooks corner. No good. Offensive rebound. Hennessy in the paint for Easter Day on senior night. She's got 14. She's the leading scorer, isn't she? <laughs> She's, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Easter Day with 14. And, and there you see it on the rebound. Russell with 12 each. 50 to 30. Lady line advantage. 333 left here. Hennessy going to hand off to Brooks. And they look to be getting into some sort of half-court set. Samantha Russell attacks paint, finds Caitlin Hennessy. Caitlin Hennessy, right wing, no good. Offensive rebound, Brooks. And her effort is good enough for two points. You're starting to see some heavy legs down low yeah. uh, for Union. It's just Union has had an excellent game plan. They've, they've kept going to it, but they're finding out what happens when you try to play yeah. offense be offense with Brian. Yeah, and Hennessy's just in every passing lane yeah. and – I mean, you look at, we've talked a lot about Hennessy over the broadcast, but she does a little bit of everything. Uh, she's leading the, uh, the conference in assists, steals, blocks. Um, she's also thrown in about 15, 15 a game and nearly seven rebounds. So and, uh, She'll be a part of that aforementioned uh, senior night. Yeah. Kay- she'll also be honored for uh, 1,800 points. Yeah. 800 rebounds. Did she look away? I think she did. Tori Brooks on the offensive <laughs> rebound. She looked away from that one. <laughs> um, a bit, bit of a heat check. Yeah. Um, anyways, Caitlin Hennessy honored for 1,800 points, 800 rebounds, and 550 assists. A monster That's career amazing. at Bryan College for. And, uh, well, and we saw it a little bit different side of her at the Reinhardt game. She started off slow. I think she was one of two in the first half. Yeah. Didn't start the second half. Um, and then down the stretch, she was involved in yeah. seemingly every play yep. until Molaski iced it with um, a couple of technical free throws or four, four, four free throws. Four yeah, free two throws. technicals yeah, and, and the regular uh, to ice that game uh, against Reinhardt and split the series. You see very few players – at any level, doesn't matter. And there's you see her in the corner taking the three. That one long. Offensive rebound, Brooks. Back to her. Thought about it for a second. Downhill with the left hand. Back to the right. Play. Tough move for Caitlin Hennessy. But you see very few players at any level. It doesn't matter. They just can flip the switch. And she is absolute. She's absolutely one of those players, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, it's, she she seems to play at her own speed. Yeah. She doesn't get sped up. She has smaller, quicker guards. Gardner a lot of time as being that number one playmaking option, and she gets to her spots and finds her teammates. Vea Majors loses the handle. I would venture to say on this pace, Brian is probably looking at some sort of scoring record, team total. Um, 
Man, the highest I can remember is 107, 106, my sophomore okay. year. Uh, but of course, there could have been there could have been more before that. Brian has been dominant for quite a while. Um, as you see those banners up in the top left of your screen, Madison Brady going to work. Yeah. A force. Uh, frustration Down there. Low. And Smith Russell had a hard time getting up there. Brady doesn't seem a bit worried about no. about uh, walking where she walks. No, she's she has her own orbit about her. If you happen to get caught up in it, that's that's your fault. Yeah. And I believe that's number 12, Janiah Moran. She'll check back in. Rachel Smith heads to the bench. And I believe Madison Brady and Mackenzie Himes are both out for the first time for Union. So the Union coach may be conserving a little energy. Tori Brooks, 4-3. Oh, my goodness. Did everything but go in. And a foul going to be called on number 25, Alyssa Malaski. It's going to be, I believe, her, I believe her second there. Uh, get her team, out. Just team first. Back into the game. Uh, it's going to be number five, Autumn Davis for the Lady Lions. 44 on the game clock. 58, 32 advantage. And Tori Brooks nearly gets the steal. Pulled back at the last minute. They're still going into the post. That is number 31, Haley Brock. Um... She's 5'10". Uh, this Union team has size yeah. everywhere. You see Madison Brady coming back into the game for there. Madison Brady standing at 6'2". Uh, I believe it. Yeah, yeah. She, might, she might be a little taller than that. Yeah, I, uh, I was down, uh, down on the court with her. She walked past me warming up. I, I felt like I was looking up to her a bit. Yeah. And there, that's Rayleigh Snodgrass, number 14. Good looking... Uh, Good looking one dribble pull up there. D didn't worry at all about the defender. Samantha Russell on the other end. Three. That one no good. Man, seems like Tori Brooks has been all over the offensive glass tonight. Um, she's got at least three that come to mind. Yeah, Brian, in terms of rebounding, don't they don't have a ton of a ton of size, uh, but they're quick, they're active, and just about everybody on the court goes to get the ball. That's nine offensive rebounds tonight as a team for Brian out rebounding Union nine to five. There's another there one from go. Brooks. She'll pick up the foul. She'll look to give Brian College the six zero um, before we hit the half. Yeah, and there's there's still time for uh, Sports Information Director Chase Green to go out and find us a sponsorship. If we hit a hundred, maybe we can get a <laughs> free chicken sandwich yeah. or bag, uh, of, bag of crystals. Yeah. Bat. Get a sack full. Yeah, it's called a sack full, yeah. Tell me my business. <laughs> I know you're well-versed in the crystal. Janai Moran won't even get one up. 60-34, to 34, Bryan College advantage. We'll be back after the break where hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a full, a full uh, 20 minutes for you. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. Grab yourself something to drink. Whatever you got to do, and we'll be right back here on the Lions Radio Network.
Hello and welcome back in to the Lions Radio Network live on YouTube.com here on the Bryan Athletics Channel. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, if you're enjoying what you're hearing, um, by some miracle, if you're enjoying listening to me and Dad, uh, consider subscribing, consider giving us a like. Uh, comments are always appreciated. I know last last time out we did this, um, we had a commenter. He was he was very inter- in- interested in the chili recipe. Um, so, you know, we read every single one of them. I enjoy reading. Um, so please feel free. Don't, don't hold anything back because we'll get back into the action. But more than that, I think we're going to transition to a little bit of a podcast format. Megan Easter Day in the corner pulls it down. She'll chuck it out to Caitlin Hennessy. But I think we're going to transition to a little more of a podcast here. 60 to 34 on the scoreboard. Caitlin Hennessy in traffic. Almost loses the ball. Four on the shot clock. Caitlin Hennessy going to have to get it up, and she does. That one just short. Alyssa Malaski, who else? There for the offensive rebound. Back out to Malaski from Russell. Alyssa going all the way in. Uses her pivot foot excellently and gets the two points. But I kind of want to preview. Uh, this third matchup with Reinhardt more more than anything. Um, and, you know, we've, we've already mentioned, you know, tragedy last night in the Reinhardt University family. Again, our thoughts and prayers with them. Um, but at the end of the day, they, they've agreed to play the basketball game. Yeah. Um, and they've still got another basketball game left before they, um, they get to that rematch with Brian this Saturday, 24th, versus Tennessee Wesleyan. Tennessee Wesley not a pushover at home now. Uh, Brian took care of them fairly easily on uh, in summers, uh, but a close game for the Brian College Lady Lions at Tennessee Wesleyan. Yep. Uh, probably close, too close for comfort versus what I guess would probably be Brian's biggest rival, um, maybe besides Reinhardt for the girls. Yeah, and the times we've been to Athens, that home home crowd usually shows up. Uh, we played up there on a Saturday before. Very small arena, very close quarters, and uh, that student section shows up in yeah. full voice. Yeah. That student section shows up in yeah. full voice. Yeah, they absolutely do. So that game not to be overlooked, uh, we talked about it on the broadcast when Reinhardt was in town. Mm-hmm. Maria Sanchez-Ponce didn't play that game. She did not play the Montreat game either. At, uh, I believe that was versus Montreat mm-hmm. at home versus Reinhardt. Um you know, that's a big loss. You know, we've, we've, we documented that well, 17 a game um, on the year for her. And, I, I mean, anything can happen. You know, maybe that game doesn't even get played, but the game will be at Tennessee Wesleyan. So, Reinhardt likely probably staying overnight um, after their Saturday game and then staying into that Monday. And, you know, time away from Waleska, Georgia, that, that can have an effect on a team. Yeah, and... and- that's a uh, that's a really physical, scrappy team, um, as we saw here, and then we saw um, at Alaska uh, in November, mm-hmm. uh, in in the first the first matchup that uh, was a Brian uh, was a Reinhardt win. Um, it's a well balanced team. Uh, coming into last last week's game, they had four four players in double figures. Um, they had a uh, a player off the bench that stepped into that starting role, hit three threes early. Yep. Uh, on that Brian was Kiara, here, uh, Kiara, Kiara Simpson. Simpson, yeah. Uh, and like we talked about, um, you know, they were without an all conference level player mm-hmm. and uh, and and took Brian at home down to the wire and and didn't back down an inch. No, um, every time. Not. Every time it looked like Brian would go on a run, uh, Reinhardt would come right back with a with a quick answer. Yeah, they did, and you know it, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I would guess that Ponce, if at all possible, will not miss that game because that game is for an automatic national tournament bid. Uh, you don't have to win the conference tournament. Megan Easterday pulls up from the short corner, but you don't have to win the conference tournament. All you got to do is win one game. Yeah. So one game versus three. I think both teams will be chomping at the bit to get that one. Uh, you know, both teams probably get in regardless. Um, I would say with the, the the last national poll comes out the day, the first day of 
Brian's com the AAC conference tournament. Um, I would say Brian will probably be near, you know, near that top 25 if they're not in it. They received votes. I believe yeah. we had them at 37th by vote count last time. Um, but you like if you're either one of these coaches, you really like having that security that hey, we're going. Yeah. And I know both teams are not going to take their foot off the gas in the conference tournament. I mean, th both teams want to win, you know, that conference tournament just as bad. But it's a big game, and it, it can't be understated. It's weird. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of a third regular season matchup to determine it. Um, and it, it seems to kind of be like a loophole that the AEC probably thought would, would almost never happen. Yeah. Um, I hate well, to say that, but that's kind of what, what it looks like we're at here. Well, and, and Reinhardt has the slightly better overall record, which in the grand scheme means absolutely nothing. You've got identical records. Really two identical teams stat-wise. They're both at the top of the conference in both offense and defense. Uh, credit to, uh, to Brian last week, Holden Reinhardt under, uh, I think it was around 15 points under their season average. Yep. That's a team that puts up 80 a game with ease. Yep. Um, and, and Brian uh, was able to keep them uh, below that average with, with the loss or the absence of their leading score. You see the Malaski three there. Um, yeah, Brian has been exceptional on defense this year. Um, I would venture to say this is their worst defensive performance here tonight. Um, just the caliber of squad out here tonight. And Madison Brady, it cannot be said enough, is ripping them apart yeah. in the paint right now. The last two buckets, I believe she's got 18 points for the game. And, exactly. I mean, yeah, she's, uh, you know, 8 eight of 13, um, 8 rebounds, 18 and 8 already. And she's done very well. You see the seniors check out there again, Nevea Majors and uh, Megan Easterday into the game for the Lady Lions. It's going to be Tori Brooks and Katie Farrell. But... I mean, I just – I think if you're head coach Gabe Johnson, you'd like to see a statement fourth quarter here. Yeah. A classic Brian quarter where they give up, you know, around five. You see Russell drill it from deep Step there. in the right direction. But where they, they're stout defensively, they run their sets really well, and, um, you know, I don't know if the game is in question anymore, uh, you know. 446 third quarter, 7243 uh, advantage for Bryan College. But if you're Bryan, there's things to work on here and there's things to improve upon. And one of them is shutting down number 33 in the paint down there. I mean, Farrell is having the has her hands full, yep. even getting position on that girl. Yep. And we'll see if they can do it down the stretch here. And Union has been looking for that call for about maybe maybe since the first half. They've been calling every travel on their bench, and I think they've got a case. There have been some there's been some, some slides, steps. yeah. There's been some steps, yeah. They've they've been calling for those uh, for those travel calls from, since early on, and and maybe influenced one there. That's number 14, Rayleigh Snodgrass. She swings it over. Loses the ball. That one might have been one. Might Madison been Brady another. will pull up now. Yep. Long two, but finds the twine for Madison Brady. And having herself one heck of a game here in Summer's Gymnasium. Samantha Russell also having herself one heck of a game. I believe she's tied Brady. Farrell up with the layup. No good. Mm. Goes for the second effort. Can't secure that one. In the game for... The Bulldogs give me number 13, Claire Belcher, and number 35, Nevea Majors on the Bryan side. Alyssa Malaski takes a seat. Good little ball movement here from Union College. They're moving it around using both sides of the floor. Rayleigh Snodgrass, 4-3, that one long. Russell on the rebound, and Farrell with an excellent box out there to keep Brady at bay. She was... She was Really wanting that offensive rebound. Majors all the way in the paint, delivers it to Russell. Russell 
Far side of the court for Davis. Davis pump fake. Major spine Farrell. Farrell the jump shot. That one no good. Pulled down by Brady. And Brady is showing. I mean, I had I've seen her once this year. It was it was a really tough loss at Johnson for him. Not able to handle it there. She's got a little bit of like like passing in there as well. Like you saw the jump shot. Uh, but she she's not just a post player. And Tori Brooks. Warm-up three-pointer there. Looked like she just walked into the gym, didn't even have her shoes on, able to knock that one down. But I will say, this deficit, my goodness, uh, looked like a carry there from every angle. This deficit has not been extended by the Lady Lions much. Union College has played a pretty great third quarter here. Um, just unfortunate they were down that much. Nice foul. Brooks ahead to Majors on the break. Majors get the foul. On number two, Madison Cox. And that's going to be her first, I believe, team first. And you mentioned uh, off-air, a 38-minute first half. And we're uh, we're moving along at that pace once again. Not many stoppages here as uh, th- these officials letting them play, letting them, letting them get, uh, get out of here. And, and we appreciate that on yeah, senior yeah. night. Yeah, and if... Uh, if you don't know, after this, I believe it will take place on the men's broadcast okay. uh, if you want to head out there, senior night for the men's and women's team. And uh, I've heard that somebody up here might be getting honored too. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll throw that out there. I, I don't want to spoil it. But well, unless it's senior citizen night, it's <laughs> probably not me. <laughs> well, uh, and, and speaking of senior night, Drew, I mean, you came in with um, – a lot of these uh, ladies on senior night. Um, I think this is, I think this is Caitlin's fifth year. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, so maybe a year ahead of you. But just your thoughts on, on this group of seniors. Yeah. They've had a ton of success. Um, I, I go back to two years ago. I think they were in the semifinals of the AAC. They were 30 and 0. Yep. Um, upset by Reinhardt. They uh, were in the semifinals there. Um, just your thoughts on their, maybe their legacy to this program. Yeah, I, uh, that's a great question. Um, I probably only came in with um, Nev- maybe not even Nevaeh. Pro- the only senior I went in with is or came in with is probably Megan. Okay. Um, uh, oh, and Alyssa, uh, Megan and Alyssa. Uh, but, yeah, to your point, I mean – this group of ladies. And the difference would be the red shirts or COVID yeah, year. Yeah, okay. for the most part. Um, this group of ladies has, you know, they've been so impressive. Um, Brian obviously plays in the hand that they're dealt. You know, some of the teams in the conference not up to par to their standard. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's hard to be a dominant team year after year. It really is. It takes a lot of mental fortitude to not drop to that mediocre level. And these ladies have done that consistently. See the three from Majors. That no good. The offensive rebound by Farrell. But these ladies have done that consistently. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really not mattered um, yeah. who the cast of characters may be. Hennessy probably, you know, the most consistent one out there, I would say, across the five years. She started all five years. Okay. Um, well, and, and I think this group specifically – I mean, they've, they've gone through three head coaches yeah, in their had, tenure yeah. here. Um, I'm blanking on his name, but the one oh, – what was his name? The guy that was there my freshman year. Man, I, I'm so sorry. I, I can't think of his name. Uh, obviously, um, they had, had the coach that's at Johnson now, and uh, now they have head coach Gabe Johnson. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a lot of turnover, and some that, you know, other programs – might have looked at and been and thought, you know, a lot of a lot of girls leave, a right. lot of girls, well, that, yeah, a lot of girls check out. Um, yeah. Well, that's the thing about college athletics in general nowadays is is you're not happy where you're at, or there's some some yeah. turnover. It's real easy to transfer, and it seems for the most part, um, the group that came in around that time have yeah. all have all stayed yeah. together. Yeah, absolutely. There's been, there's been a a couple of yeah, 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 no doubt. I mean, there's, there's turnover, um, but for the most part, it's been girls graduating. I think of um, 
last year Destiny Kastner uh, really stepped into her role. Um, you know, uh, Gabe Johnson, her his first year last year, kind of came in. She'd been mainly a mainly a screener, um, a guy, a girl that got you know open looks and only open looks. And Gabe Johnson came in and said, "No, I, I want you to score the ball." And she was she was super effective last year. I think of um, a Carly Combs graduated the year before her. Um, I believe holds the record here for three pointers made at Bryan. Um, uh, a Shayla Ludi also graduated in that glad- uh, graduating class. And you know, you look down on the court tonight that have played. I believe there's only been one. Gabe Johnson recruit that's played here tonight, okay. and that's been uh, number five, Autumn Davis. Um, okay. So it's a real testament to these ladies sticking around, yeah. um, seeing it through, and um, just building a culture worthy of to where they can put themselves, you know, in the position when that poll comes up next Wednesday to be nationally ranked. Uh, they can put themselves in a position to go to that national tournament, and we'll just have to see how it shakes out. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I don't know if I I go this far. You only see you see very few jersey numbers retired here. Mm-hmm. You see three on the wall right now: the Bass sisters and Brandon Cole for the men's team. I would say, in my opinion, Caitlin Hennessy's probably in that range for Bryan College. Good point. Um, Samantha Russell is cl- is close. Uh, mm-hmm. She obviously has the disadvantage of being a transfer. Her uh, her first two years played at the Division two school, Young Harris. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, we'll have to see how all that shakes up. Right now the focus is obviously just on this run, this team, how far how far are they going to go. Yeah. And Well, and at 82-48, yeah. you know, you, you figure the, the decisions in hand here, but a couple of very important weeks. We talked about it a little earlier, um, and we talked about it quite a bit last week, that – I think this team's going to be measured by what they do in the postseason. Um, yep. Locking up that regular season title, obviously, is is next up. And and at the NAI level, NAI level, that's so important because yep. it comes with that automatic national yep. tournament bid. Um, but but th- this is a team, and this is a group of girls who are the last two years. Um, you know, we're probably. Uh, the favorite, yeah. Um, certainly, number the number one seed the last two years, yeah. And and didn't walk out of Kingsport with the uh, yeah. the conference tournament trophy. And you know, I you know, long long time viewers that have watched through this season, you see Russell another three pointer. That one's short. Uh, you know, we talked to head coach Gabe Johnson. We talked to senior Samantha Russell out there, and the the, the message is is consistent. We've already lost this year. Mm-hmm. There's no pressure for us anymore. The right. perfect season is, is not a thing for them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're battle-tested. They went to California on Thanksgiving break. They got their butts handed to them. Um, they went to Reinhardt, lost a close one. Uh, and I, I really do think that's the difference. That, that's what you see. Uh, and I do wonder in the future how that's going to come into play. Like, is it just – we know we're better than these teams. Yeah. We're not dropping, you know, a game we normally wouldn't drop. Um, and, and that's it for me. That, uh, when I heard those two answers, I was like, that makes total sense. Those are great. That yeah. is exactly what it looks like out yeah, there. And you, you would figure that these, these seniors especially wouldn't, wouldn't need to be motivated, um, you know, outside their, their experience in their last couple of, uh, last couple of postseasons. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun next couple of weeks for yeah, this group. Absolutely, and a busy one is that. Of course, the game uh, at Tennessee Wesleyan neutral site versus Reinhardt. If obviously Brian probably taking care of business here. If Reinhardt handles b- things at Tennessee Wesleyan like they should, um, that game on a Monday. The plan of the conference tournament begins on Wednesday. On Thursday. The actual, I guess, first round begins, so that's when Brian plays again. On Friday, the semifinal. On Saturday, the final. So that would be that's that would be four. That be, I believe, is that four games in six days? That'd be four games in six days. Yeah. I mean, that's a tall task. I mean, both of this Reinhardt team and Brian team, you know, are are at a little bit of a disadvantage yeah. 
for for being so good. I hate I hate to say it, but well, and you could tell last week talking to to head coach Gabe Johnson that he and and Ron Hart's coach Campbell, you know, they were a little surprised. Yeah. At the rule of <laughs> deciding. Yeah. The, the regular season two days before the two or three days before the start of the conference tournament, um, but it's it's the hand that's been dealt, yeah. and ordinarily with you may rest people, and we mentioned that uh, Ron Hart's leading scorer, um, she was in a uh, an air cast, yeah, in a walking boot um, last week when she was here. Normally yeah. she may sit that game out, but you've got so much riding on it. Yeah. Not only the number one seed in the conference tournament, the regular season title, but also you mentioned that automatic bid to the national tournament. Yeah. Um, well, and is, I mean, everybody wants to hang a banner on the wall, don't? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean that as a player, like I, you know, I want to, I want to see this right here. I mean, mm-hmm. conference, um, conference champions. There's some space there, yep. and it needs to be filled. It needs to be, and it will be updated. We have um, some lovely donors doing working on that for us. But um, you know, there's always room to add another year on the banner. No matter how much, as you see, I believe Megan Easterday checks out. It uh, might be for the final time. And um, Sam Russell will go to the line to shoot two. As Drew mentioned, uh, Megan Easterday, uh, seniors checked out, had a heck of a game. Uh, four- 14 points on four of six three-pointers, grabbed three rebounds. A rare start for Easter Day, but uh, made the most made the most of her time. Absolutely. Oh, a bullet pass from Hennessy. Russell knocks it down. Pretty basketball. And Hennessy has kind of been um, – Seems like walking through this Union defense while we've been talking for about the past about the past five minutes, and that I hate yeah. to make light of it, but that's kind of what it's looked like. Yeah, I mean you've got Russell with with 25 on seven threes. Uh, Hennessy, I don't I don't know if it's that quiet, but 22 points, six rebounds, seven assists. Oh my! Um, <laughs> and there's their seven. There's their their uh, seventh rebound. Seventh right rebound. There. So, you know, if depending on how long she stays in. Um, Triple double is uh, not yeah. completely out of reach. She's going for it. She probably thought, "Shoot the ball, Sam." That's right. Sam Russell going to pull up for another deep one. She, of course, a senior too. She gets the rebound. She's going to go for another one. No one on Union College closes out. Yep. Sam Russell back iron. Brian College three points away from the century mark. There's and we talked a little bit about it. They're uh, they're. Could be creeping up on a points record here. I wish I knew what it was. Yeah. That's uh, that's Russell's eight three pointer of the night. This is uh, this is kind of what you see a lot with these teams that come into Bryan with super. They're super energetic. They yeah. come in. You know, it's like, oh wow, can they can they do something against this Bryan College team? And then you know, we get to halftime. It's around fifteen or twenty, and in the second half. It's just talent and stamina, and and being well coached that wins Brian that Brian College just puts never lets their foot take a moment off the accelerator. You see Caitlin Hennessy and Navea Majors check out right there. Oh, and Samantha Russell. Samantha Russell yeah. Congratulations to those lady Megan Easterday back in Easter the game. Easterday back in. Autumn Davis. Oh, Euro step with the left hand. Autumn Davis and gives the bench a look for show. Little My stop. goodness. Her first basket of the game. And, you know, you can't understate the importance of a game like this for Davis to get some offensive confidence. Davis has been a terror on the defensive end. Yeah. She needs no help there. I mean, she does things, pressure and guards, that you probably can't teach. But she has looked hesitant at times in the paint, you know, with that outside shot. Tory Brooks for the century. No good. Rebound. 
Malaski, I believe, Megan Easterday pulls up for the century mark. That one just short. Another offensive rebound. Brooks flips it to Easterday, and somebody's got to get it. Ryan College, 12 on the shot clock. We'll get back to that previous thought in just a moment. I'm rooting See for if Easter one of them can get it. Oh, Brooks can't do it. Fail with the left hand. There it is. 101 for the Lady Lions. Anytime you can hang 100 in summers, it's a good day. But back to my last point. You know, you can't understate the importance of a young player gaining offensive confidence, even if it's a lesser opponent. It, it matters. You know, it, every piece when you have two teams as closely rated together as Reinhardt and Bryan matters. Davis hitting a three, you know, uh, versus not could be the difference in the game. Um, so it's, you know, it's all important. Brooks from space, no good. Mulaski pulls it down, back out to Davis. There There's Davis, 4-3. Yep, there it is. And that's number 24, Paige Moody. She'll check in for Mulaski. Probably Mulaski's last time seeing the floor tonight, a senior as well. Easter Day, the only senior still out there? Um, yeah, I believe so. Um, he's just going to let her. Let her go for it. Why not? You're up. Uh, you're up almost 60. And we've got the final 253. Don't forget on the men's broadcast, Senior Night, honoring both the men's and women's seniors. And that's a three-pointer there. That one long. Autumn Davis, the board in traffic, loses the ball, and. Madison Brady gets it back out to, I believe, number five, Kirsten Nicole. Kirsten Nicole pump fakes into the paint, finds Madison Brady. My goodness, her night, I guess. Wow. Tori Brooks gets it to Davis, back to Brooks. Tori Brooks from deep, her favorite place to be. She puts in 107, and I, I wish we had the numbers, but we got to be getting close to a team total points record, and Union College probably going to slow it down, take some time off the clock here. That's Brian's 19th made three-pointer. My goodness. Everything going right. 44%. Ooh. And a jump ball there from who else? Megan Easterday. Coach Gabe J Johnson going to empty the bench. We see number 22, Emma Conradi, in the game. Number 33, Carly Gentry, as Brooks and Farrell take a seat. I believe there's only one more girl on that bench that has not played tonight. We'll see if she gets in. Yeah, but she does play uh, Autumn Davis's position. My goodness, bodies hitting the floor everywhere. Brady, Brady taking out the whole team there. She has been a force down low. 22 points, nine rebounds wow. for Brady, a sophomore. She did her job today, that's for sure. She gets the ball, attacks Easterday off balance. That one no good. Carly Gentry comes away with the rebound. 136 left. Looking to get some more bench player buckets. Easterday, she'll take it anyway. Megan Easterday, no good. Carly Gentry thought about it for a moment. Easterday swings, finds Davis. Davis crossover on the baseline. Moody pump fakes into the paint. Ryan College going to have to get a shot up here. Eight on the clock. Carly Gentry pump fakes it. Finds Moody three on the clock. Moody step back three-pointer. That one no good. Conradi on the offensive rebound. Conradi all the way around. Up and in. 109.50 here. Nice offensive putback. This is a good cap on the regular season, I'll tell you that. This is this right here are the moments that you just you look on as a fan, a coach, parent, you just you really like to see well, it. You, you took care of business. Your seniors were spotlighted. Yep. You played a lot of players and we're thirty seven seconds away from nobody getting hurt. Yep, absolutely. Kind Megan Easter Day night. open top of the key. Yes! Sir! Now, now it's a perfect night. There it is. Is that her fifth, her fifth three-pointer of the night? And I think everybody can agree 
That'll make you smile. So how many games has she taken 12 shots? Never. <laughs> Madison Brady. Oh. There she is from deep. Madison Brady's got 25 on the night. 112.55 looks to be how we'll end it. Autumn Davis going to dribble it out. She'll hold it. They're on their feet in summers, and why shouldn't they be? Brian College completes the, I believe, 21-1 20, and one season, I believe. Yep, the 21-1 and one season in the conference. 23-5. And the, uh, the ever... The ever-important third matchup with Reinhardt coming up. That'll be at Tennessee Wesleyan. Uh, i got to get down to the floor, so we're going we're gonna to say goodbye. Thanks for watching uh, so much. And uh, catch us on the men's broadcast for Senior, na on, senior Night excuse me, on the Lions Radio Network.
her favorite memory of Brian is using sign language to spell Gabby at high school. Megan would like to thank my parents for giving me the opportunity to be here and supporting me in everything. Also, I would like to thank my mentor, Mark Montgomery, for helping me keep my head on straight for the last nine years. Thank you, Megan. Give it up for a one more time. Our next senior is Caitlin Hennessy. Caitlin's major is in forensic accounting. And before we read the rest of her stuff, we would like to present Caitlin with her 1800 career point ball. Caitlin's awards and accolades while at Ryan include Freshman of the Year, four times All-Conference First Team, two-time Defensive Player of the Year, two-time All-American, all-time career block record at Bryan. Her plans after she graduates is to get her real estate license while coaching at her own old high school. Her favorite verse is Joshua 1-9. Joshua her favorite memory at Bryan College is uh, with learning what it feels like to not only be successful as a team, but building meaningful friendships while doing so. She would like to thank her family and friends, her best friend Alice, her old coaches, and my old and current teammates. Thank you, Caitlin, and give it up one more time for us. Our next senior is Nevea Major. Nevada's major is in psychology. Her awards and accolades while at Bryant include member of the Student Leadership Council. She plans to return for a fifth year to play and master in human services after she graduates. Her favorite verse is Romans 5 8. Her favorite memory at Bryant is all the road trips we took and the memories we made together building our family culture. Nevaeh would like to thank her mom, dad, siblings, and Coach Gabe for being the best coach of my time at Bryan. Thank you, Nevaeh. Give it up for her one more time. Our next senior is Alyssa Malaski. Alyssa is a biopsychology major with a minor in biblical studies and business administration. Her awards and accolades while at Bryan College include all freshman team and maintaining a 3.8 GPA. Her plans after she graduates are to begin a master's program and pursue a career in graphic design. Her favorite verse or quote is John 1633. Her favorite memory at Bryan is all the pre-game routines and pre-game dancing. Alyssa would like to thank my family. They have supported me every step of the way and I could not be more grateful for the best support system and her teammates that turned into family. They filled my four years here with so many memories and have made the bad days good and the good days even better. Thank you, Alyssa. Give it up for her one more time. <laughs> Our next senior is Samantha Russell. <laughs> and before we read the rest, we would also like to present Samantha with her 1,500 point scoring ball. <laughs> Samantha's major is in exercise health science. Her awards and accolades while at Bryan College include a 1,500 point score, newcomer of the year, second team all conference, first team all conference, and all American honorable mention. Her plans after she graduates are to become a GA to pursue college coaching while getting her master's degree. Her favorite verse or quote is Psalm 7326. Her favorite memory of Brian is our team's pregame ritual of having a dance party before every game. Samantha would like to thank her parents and brothers for their continuous support, all the coaches who have devoted their time to me over the years, and all of her teammates. Thank you, Samantha, and give it up for her one more time. And give it up for all of our seniors on the last team one more time. And now we will transition to the seniors on the men's basketball team. Our first senior is Caleb Grimes.
Cannon's major is in exercise and health science. His awards and accolades while at Bryan College include going viral and being featured on Overtime twice. He plans after he graduates for to pursue professional basketball career overseas. Dot, dot, dot. Stay tuned. His favorite personal quote is, Bet on you. His favorite memory of Brian was having fun with all the guys throughout the years. Bus rides, hotels, out to eat, no matter what it was. He would like to thank God, Coach Don Murkowski, all his teammates throughout the year, and his family. Give it up for Caleb one more time. Our next senior is Ian Johnson. Ian's major is in exercise and health science. His awards and accolades while at Bryan College include a thousand point score and first team all conference. His plans after he graduates is to plan on getting my master's in business or education. His favorite verse of quote is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you think this is slick back? This is pushback by Tim Robinson. His favorite memory at Ryan are the bus rides to the away game, listening to DJ Nono and DJ Out of This World. We would like to thank his mom, his dad, and the coaching staff. Thank you, Ian, and give it up one more time for him. <laughs> Our next senior is Nick Roberts. <laughs> Nick Major is in secondary education with a history licensure. His awards and accolades while at Bryan College include a three-time academic all-conference, uh, 3.89 GPA, and the Lee Rifkin Scholarship recipient. His plans after he graduates is to enroll in the master's program at Bryan, unsure if I will jump into a teaching job immediately or will look to be a GA coach. His favorite verse of quote is, the hardest choices require the strongest will by Thanos. His favorite memory at Bryan is the road trips with the team, DJ for the team, golf with the boys, hanging out at Townhouse One, watching and watching Thursday Night Football. He would like to thank his parents, Todd and Kelly, his grandmother, his teammates, and friends over the last four years, all my coaches and professors. Thank you, Nick, and give it up for him one more time. <laughs> Lastly, we would like to thank the man who raised these wonderful airway for us, Drew Rogers. information and broadcasting. Drew is his favorite accomplishment are the three times academic all-conference all with a 3.65 GPA and being the Bryan Mini Golf US Open champion. <laughs> his plans after leaving Bryan are to either come back to GA or to enjoy the sports information somewhere else in college. His favorite quote is, Donald may be dressed like a hot dog. But you're wearing a hot dog costume by Tim Robinson. His favorite memory is here in Rada every Thursday night. Drew would like to thank his parents for always supporting him. Myself, too. And Camille Holly for being the greatest boss to work with, his coaches, and all the boys. Give it up for Drew. Thank you, guys. One more time. Everybody, two pins for one good picture.